Good morning. Welcome to 2024, and welcome to Grace Bible Church, and welcome to Equipping Hour. We're going to do something a little bit different this morning, and so we're going to start off by rearranging the seating chart. So uh, if you're not seated with a clump of people, you need to move. (laughs) So find a group, five, six, seven people that you can sit near. Uh, We're going to take some time this morning and have some guided prayer for the church plant in New Orleans. So this morning is their first morning meeting together. Uh, They are meeting for their first ever real startup service this morning, even as we're meeting for equipping hour. So we're going to pray simultaneously with their launch. And I'm going to guide us through a time of prayer Uh, But there will be opportunities for you to pray with the people you're around. Uh, There will not be a roving mic. You will not be recorded. Uh, These prayers go to the golden bowls of incense in heaven. And uh, there'll be opportunity for you to encourage one another with those. Yes, you do need to move from your assigned seats. I'm so sorry. (laughs) You did. You moved from there to there. Well, you need to find, find some people. All right. And what I'm going to do is uh, use our missions template as a starting place for thinking about categories of prayer. So I will give a category of prayer. I will give you some passages to think about. uh, And then I will give you time as a group where you're gathered uh, to pray. But I just want to remind us at the front end uh, that church planting is hard. The church ministry is hard enough because we're dealing with ourselves and our own sin and difficulties, uh, impatience, and all the things that go along with just being faithful to Christ in a dark world. And being in a smaller group of people away from home, away from the norms, away from what's comfortable, and for the Miles, for Judy, uh, for the Robinsons to be away from this family of believers for an extended period of time, an indefinite period of time, perhaps the remainder of their earthly existence in a place that's hard. Um, We need to pray. So we don't want to underestimate uh, the power of God, nor our responsibility to be dependent on him in prayer for these things, for the success of a really difficult endeavor. Let me uh, begin our time uh, praying And then I'll lead us through sort of our guided template. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we are so thankful for the progress of the gospel. As we have learned in our time together as a body, uh, the gospel cannot fail. Uh, Nothing can stop the gospel. Not opposition, uh, not the, the waxing and waning of empires, not Satan, not our own sin, not our own weaknesses, that you have set out to retrieve for yourself, redeem unto yourself a people for your own possession. And all of this for your own glory. And so we thank you that we get to participate in your commission, your great task of drawing people to yourself from every tongue and tribe and nation and people. And as primarily a a Gentile um, body of people, we express gratitude to you for grafting us in as those who were outsiders to the covenants of promise, who have been brought in by grace, who have been included by mercy in your great plan of redemption to make a people for yourself. We pray now for the people of New Orleans, a great city, uh, a populace amongst whom you must have your people. And we pray for the new church plant there, for Grace Bible Church in New Orleans, that it would grow, that it would grow numerically, that it would grow in maturity, that you would equip her with all that she needs to be a light, to be a witness, um, to be an effective uh, evangelistic enterprise in that city. God, we pray that you would prepare the ground We pray, even as you have prepared the workers, that you would give them energy and strength and endurance, that this work would last a long time and be faithful, that this work would multiply, again, that it would all be for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Romans chapter 11. And as we think about the the way that we've framed up missions 
and thinking about missions, thinking about the church in expansion in this, church, in this, um, in this world. We've talked about it in terms of four words, glory, gospel, church, world. When we think about missions, we think about the glory of God in the gospel of Jesus Christ manifested in local churches around the world. And we're going to use that as a template for prayer this morning. And let's start simply with the glory of God. Here in Romans chapter 11, we have one of these doxologies, an outburst of praise, uh, where the Apostle Paul, writing out the gospel at this apex of the explanation of the mercies of God, cries out, beginning in verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and unfathomable his ways. Who has known the mind of the Lord or who has become his counselor? Or who has first given to him that it might be repaid to him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. With the people that you're around and if you're just coming in, make sure you sit next to people that you can pray with. Um, let's just take some time uh, praying with, the, with a small group of people around you about the glory of God. Uh, using this text or any other text you'd like to use, um, just asking that God would get glory for himself in New Orleans uh, by bringing about a mature church and new believers. Take a few moments and I will wrap up this section in prayer again. <laughs>
Oh, great God, we thank you that you are committed to your own glory and that nothing can thwart your purposes. You have set your face to get a people for yourself that you might receive all honor and praise. You have promised your own son that you would be pleased by him, that he would have your spirit upon him and would bring forth justice to the nations, that he would not break a crushed reed or extinguish a faintly burning wick, but he would bring forth justice in truth and not be faint or crushed until he establishes justice in the earth and the coastlands will wait expectantly for his law. And you have said, O Lord, you, the one who created the heavens and stretched them out, you spread out the earth and its offspring. You give breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. You said, you are Yahweh. And you have called your servant in righteousness. And you gave him as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to bring out prisoners from the dungeon and those who inhabit darkness from the prison. You are Yahweh, and that is your name, and you will not give your glory to another, nor your praise to graven images. And so we sing to you, we declare to you, Yahweh, new songs. We long for your praise to be sung from the ends of the earth, the coastlands and among all who inhabit them, the wilderness and its cities, that they may lift up their voices. All the inhabitants of all the lands to sing aloud and shout for joy, O oh God, let them give glory to you and declare your praise in all the lands. Amen. Next, we're going to uh, pray for the church plant in New Orleans along the lines of the gospel. So my invitation to you is to uh, open your Bible, consider a good gospel text, something about substitutionary atonement. You know, that missions is not missions unless it involves the gospel. And so we need to pray for the church in New Orleans that they herald the gospel, that they never walk away from the gospel, that they are faithful to the gospel for as long as they exist. Uh, we truly have no other message than this. So I'll, I'll turn your attention to 2 Corinthians 5.21. God made Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin on our behalf so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you came to die for sinners. We, came, we thank you that you came and offered yourself as a substitute in our place, that you might take on yourself our sins, and that you might give to your people your righteousness. Oh God, we pray for New Orleans, for the city, for New Orleans East, for the neighborhood in which the church has been planted. And we pray that you would draw sinners to yourself and they would find in your son, the Lord Jesus Christ, forgiveness, redemption, freedom, life, and love. I would invite you now and your groups to pray for the church plant along the lines of the gospel and all that Jesus has done for sinners.
a world full of rebels like us so that you sent your own son that whoever would believe in him would absolutely not perish but certainly have eternal life. We pray that this message would go forth undiluted, undiminished in New Orleans, a place where there is much God talk, there is religion, there are churches, there are buildings. There is a culture of awareness of spiritual things, and yet they need the truth. We pray that it would be clear that it would be boldly proclaimed that Grace Bible Church NOLA would be known for the heralding of this great message of your love for sinners. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. And beginning in verse 11 is a a passage discussing what it meant for Gentiles as outsiders to be brought into fellowship with Jews uh, who had been familiar with the Old Testament and the covenants. And, And they're in the midst of much ethnic tension in the pages of the New Testament. It's a good paradigm for us thinking about God bringing people who would otherwise be alienated from one another into communion, into fellowship with one another in the gospel. Listen to Paul's words here. Therefore, remember that formerly you, the Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you are at that time without Christ, alienated from the citizenship of Israel, strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who made both groups one and broke down the dividing wall of the partition. By abolishing in his flesh the enmity, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so that in himself he might create the two into one new man, making peace, and might reconcile them both in one body to God through the cross, having in himself put to death the enmity." And he came and preached the good news of peace to you who are far away and peace to those who are near. For through him, we both have our access in one spirit to the Father. So then you no longer are strangers and sojourners, but are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being joined together is growing into a holy sanctuary in the Lord in whom you are also being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. This remarkable section on the church gives us an indication of what God is doing in the expansion of the gospel. Bringing together people who are reconciled to God and through the gospel reconciled to one another. Uh, Creating these little organisms, these buildings, these bodies that function together for the progress of the gospel. Uh, This is what New Orleans needs. New Orleans needs the church. They need to know the glory of God. They will only have it through the gospel of Jesus Christ, but it will be seen, manifested, known, and heard through a vital, thriving, local body of believers called the church. The great thing about the church is what happens in the church by God's grace is something the world cannot touch. The church has access to supernatural power, The church has a message the world doesn't know and doesn't understand. And in the church, all the things that divide humanity get broken down. We are all one and leveled and unified in the grace of God. And that is to be seen in the church. So let's pray uh, that the church in New Orleans will indeed be built on that foundation of the apostles and the prophets, that is New Testament doctrine, be faithful to the whole counsel of God's word, and be built up into the kind of body that God designs to take the gospel to the ends of the earth. Go ahead and pray.
Grace Bible Church New Orleans would indeed be the church, faithfully, according to your script, according to your plan. We pray that the church would be marked by all the things that your word tells us the church should be. The preaching of your word, the the whole counsel of your word, faithfully, boldly, in season and out of season. We pray that the church would be marked by the, the ordinances of baptism and our Lord's table. We pray that the church would be faithful to instructions like discipline and making disciples. God, we pray that men would be trained and women would be trained and uh, another generation of, of students and young ones would hear the gospel and would believe. We pray that they would be marked by sincere corporate worship and by prayer and by the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry, by the filling out of all the one another commands in the New Testament. God, we pray that you would raise up for the church qualified leaders, that there would be a a consortium of qualified elders to shepherd the church alongside of Omri. God, we pray that they would continue to make disciples and see them complete in Christ, leaving no one behind. God, we pray that the church in New Orleans would multiply that they would grow numerically and in maturity such that they must send others out. And we pray that they would plant even beyond themselves. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. The glory of God and the gospel of Jesus Christ manifested in the church. And the last element of this framework of thinking about missions or church expansion is the world. The church is not designed to be a cul-de-sac. It's designed to be a conduit for God's grace in the gospel until the work is done, until the end of the age. And Jesus promised to be with the disciple-making, disciple-making disciples who would be about this task until he returns. And so we pray for the world. It's not too much to pray for. This is what God promised. Think about Revelation chapter 5 and the throne room of the Lamb where Jesus is surrounded by people from every tongue and tribe and nation and people. Listen to this promise from Isaiah 25. Yahweh of hosts will prepare a lavish banquet for all peoples on this mountain, a banquet of aged wine, choice pieces with marrow, and refined aged wine. And on this mountain, he will swallow up the covering, which is over all peoples, the veil, which is stretched over all nations. He will swallow up death for all time. And the Lord Yahweh will wipe tears away from all faces. He will remove the reproach of his people from all the earth, for Yahweh has spoken. And it will be said in that day, behold, this is our God in whom we have hoped that he would save us. This is Yahweh for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and be glad in his salvation. This is the future. This is where all of these efforts lead And so let's take a few moments and pray that God will do exactly as he has promised and that he will use the means of faithful servants to that end. Go ahead and pray.
You are the maker of heaven and earth. You are the father of all the living. You are the giver of all good gifts. And we thank you that your purposes cannot fail and that you will get for yourself a people for your own possession from every tongue and tribe and nation. We ask now, O oh God, that, that we here at Grace Bible Church and the team in New Orleans would be faithful means that you use to get your people for yourself. And we pray just to be available, useful to you as vessels for that great task. In Christ's name, amen. We're going to take a few moments and just express gratitude to God for a few things this morning. And uh, I want to give you an update on a location. Uh, they began their meeting. They will have begun their meeting. They did begin their meeting at 10 a.m. their time this morning. And they were able to secure a location at Bourgeois and Associates Mortgage at 8050 Crowder Boulevard, New Orleans. So while they had the, the original location fall through, um, God provided another location through some really interesting connections, uh, a place for them to meet. It's a room that seats about 60. Uh, so that's, that's probably about the right size to, to, uh, to feel cozy together. Uh, we'll pray that they outgrow that soon. Uh, but the Lord has been very kind to provide that location for them. I got this note from Omri, Donut Bakery Donuts and Derek Sips Coffee will be available. So uh, that, that's an incentive. Um, so we, we have much to give thanks to the Lord for in that. I just want to highlight for you some of the ways that God has provided for this church plant. Obviously, through all of you, through here at, at Grace Bible Church, uh, over a decade of, of training and equipping and friendship and then seeing those relationships severed by geography, though not by love. Uh, all of that is a significant cost uh, from the budget of this church, from your generous giving in this church. But it's not just this church that has contributed to this task. Uh, Gilbert Bible Church has been a participant in supporting uh, Grace Bible New Orleans. Mission Gilbert Queen Creek um, has also significantly contributed financially and in prayer and in time uh, to this church. Inner City Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan has contributed significantly to this effort. Um, a number of the churches in the Expositor Seminary Network have contributed time, material, money, and uh, even looking forward to contributing personnel down the road. So um, we have so much to give thanks to the Lord for in this uh, let's just express gratitude for a few moments to him for all that he's done so far.
God, gratitude ought to mark every thought that we have. When we think about what we deserve and what we have been given by you instead, uh, we ought to be grateful people at every turn. And we have much to give thanks to you for in regards to the church plant in New Orleans. We thank you for just this body, Grace Bible, uh, being so sacrificial in love and care and uh, willingness even to uh, have dear friends removed from us for this great cause. We praise you for Gilbert Bible Church, for Mission Bible, for Inner City Baptist, for the Expositor Seminary and the network of churches involved. We want to express gratitude to you as well for the, the sweet welcome and reception of some local churches in the greater New Orleans area that have been such friends to this endeavor. Now, we pray that you would bless them and magnify uh, their gospel expansion. May they have fruitful ministries in the city as well. And we pray for sweet partnerships and friendships amongst these churches. And we praise you and thank you, O oh God, for a place to meet this morning. And we thank you especially for the team who have pulled up stakes to do a really hard thing, uh, seeking your glory, uh, seeking the progress of the gospel and the expansion of your church. And we Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to spend some time just petitioning the Lord on behalf of the team. And so if you have something to, to write with, I'm just going to spit out the, the names again of, of our team there and their kids. And um, what, a, what a joy it would be, I know, for the Dudleys, the Miles, the Robinsons, to see their own kids come to faith in Christ, to be made complete in Christ and be active participants in this work in New Orleans. So Chloe, Obi, Jonah, Zeke, Nashawn, Miles, pray for them. For Kess, Lee, Jehu, Imara, Manoa, Robinson, pray for them. For Zakai, Gimli, Galadriel, and whatever other wonderful name the Dudleys will come up with with baby four in March. Um, do pray for these. Pray for moms as they care for their kids in a new place and adjusting to new things. Uh, but the greatest need of, of all of these names of these little ones, these young ones, is that they too would know Christ, that they would embrace the gospel, that they would entrust themselves to him. Um, this is the reason these families have gone to New Orleans, to, to make disciples in another place. And we pray that their own kids would experience this grace of God. Let's pray for them now.
pleased to draw all of these children to yourself in your grace and by your power. We pray that you would give to Judy as a grandma, to Pam, to Brittany, to Emily as moms, uh, extra special care and attention, uh, an awareness of spiritual needs, uh, that you would give them a, just a diligence, a patience, a thoroughness, and attention uh, to these little ones in their home. We pray that the dads would be faithful and diligent in their homes as a primary ministry, again, for your glory. And we pray that you would do uh, what is impossible for parents, what is impossible for man, to cause these children to be born, uh, not of flesh, not of blood, not of the will of man, but born from above by your spirit, for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to pray next for a list of names. So if you've got a quick hand and want to write down names, you can. What I would encourage you is at least grab on to one of these names as I pray. And then when there will be time uh, for you to pray in your group uh, to lift these up before the Lord. I, I don't know the spiritual condition of any of these names. These are people that, the, that, that our team there has already met, interacted with, has, have had significant conversation with. Um, names that I've been praying for would encourage you to pray for. So I will pray these names out loud. Um, write as many of them down as you care to, and then, uh, and then we'll pray for them. Heavenly Father, we, we bring these people before you. They are yours by creation. We pray that they would be yours by the gospel for eternal salvation. We lift up to you black and Carrie, and Joanne, Chuck, and Stephanie, Arthur, Charles, Tyreek, and Carter, Rashad, Tassa, Lamage, Nico, Rhodesia, T, Cordell, Mylan, Jacob, and Harold, Mike, and Erica, T.D., and Caddo, and Cash, Tyson, Davel, Bobby, Walter, Wanda. We lift up to you the workers at Home Depot that are now very familiar with Omri and Derek, restaurant workers, grocery store cashiers, stockers, and the owner of a very cool used bookstore. Lord, in this neighborhood, faces will be familiar, people will be known, lives will be scrutinized, and we pray for our team that their reputations would be in accord with the message they bring, that they would live above reproach, that you would fill them with hospitality and compassion. And so these names we bring before you as, as precious, as uh, potentially new friends, God, we pray that they would be your sheep, that you would bring them to yourself, that you would make them your own, uh, that you would cause them to be the church. And we pray for all those that uh, the Robinsons, the Miles, Judy, and the Dudleys will meet. Pray for the ones their kids will meet. And we pray that you would bring many, many people to yourself. Pray for them now.
you who are the father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to your great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance that is incorruptible, undefiled, and unfading, having been kept in heaven for us, who are protected by your power through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In contemplating all of these things, God, we thank you for the convergence of, of your great and awesome glory and your condescending mercy. That we who, by right of our own sin, of our own nature, should have no part with you. And you have brought us to yourself in love and grace. We, we don't take for granted those who boldly shared the gospel with us. We pray that we would carry that torch, that we would be those who are bold and courageous and relentless in sharing the gospel with others. And we pray for our dear friends in New Orleans, that we miss them. And yet we are so thankful for their taking this great message, seeking to establish your church according to your plan. And because we know that very soon we will see them again. That very soon we will be together in heaven with all the redeemed. Bringing praise to you undimmed, undiminished. In the meantime, God, keep us humble. Keep us faithful. Let us be useful to you. We pray that you would provide a, a permanent home for the church in New Orleans. A, a place to meet that they can own and, and work from. We pray that you would keep the team humble, faithful, useful. And we ask all this that you would accomplish even more than we know to ask, according to your great name. Amen. Thank you for participating in the church plant this morning by prayer. I trust you will continue, and um, we look forward to seeing what the Lord will do.